In the mid-2 and century BC, a new chapter in the annals of the ancient world was being written with the rise of Mithridates I, a king destined to guide Parthia from the shadows of obscurity to the pinnacle of glory. It was around 171 BC when Mithridates ascended to the Parthian throne, inheriting a realm nestled between the daunting expanses of the Iranian plateau and the mighty civilizations that surrounded it. Mithridates I's realm was a kingdom yet unripe, encircled by giants. To the west lay the waning but still formidable Seleucid Empire, a remnant of Alexander the Great's fractured dominions, ruled by King Antiochus IV the Epiphanes. To the north, the steppes whispered with the movements of nomadic tribes, ever a looming threat. And to the south, the wealthy city-states along the Persian Gulf coast watched the rising power with wary eyes. Yet Mithridates was not a king to be content with the status quo. He dreamt of a Parthia that was not just a kingdom, but an empire. His first ambitious move was against the Kingdom of Media, a land rich in history and resources, vital for his expansionist vision. Media, under the weak and fragmented rule of local dynasts, was ripe for conquest. Mithridates' campaign was swift and brutal, City after city fell. Ecbatana, the ancient capital, surrendered in 167 BC, heralding a new era in Parthian history. But Mithridates knew that military might alone could not sustain an empire. He established his rule in Media, not just through force, but also through alliances and marriages, weaving the fabric of loyalty and kinship. He married a Median princess, forging a bond that melded the two cultures and peoples, ensuring stability and acceptance of his rule. Eyes now set westward. Mithridates eyed Mesopotamia, a land famed for its ancient cities and fertile lands. The jewel of this region was Seleucia on the Tigris, a city whose wealth and strategic location made it a desirable prize. The Seleucid Empire, engaged in internal strife and external pressures, was losing its grip on this vital region. Mithridates saw in this an opportunity, a chance to thrust Parthia onto the center stage of the great geopolitical theater of the age. In a bold move, Mithridates marched his army, a blend of heavy cavalry and skilled archers, across the Zagros Mountains, descending into the Mesopotamian plains like a storm from the east. The Parthian forces moved with a speed and precision that caught the Seleucid garrisons off guard. By 141 BC, after a series of lightning campaigns and sieges, the gates of Seleucia opened to Mithridates, marking a turning point in Parthian history. This victory was not merely a conquest, it was a statement to the world. From the steps of the royal palace in Seleucia, Mithridates I proclaimed the arrival of a new power in the ancient world, an empire born from the ambition and vision of a king who dared to dream. The Parthian sunrise was upon the world, and its light would shine for centuries to come. In this new dawn, Mithridates I stood not just as a conqueror, but as a harbinger of a golden age, an architect of an empire that would leave indelible marks on history's tapestry. Part 2 The conquest of Mesopotamia and the shadow of Rome. As dawn broke over the newly conquered media, Mithridates I, the Parthian king of kings, gazed westward with a vision that transcended the mere acquisition of land. His eyes were set on Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilizations, and a prize that would elevate Parthia from a regional power to an empire revered and feared. In the year 140 BC, Mithridates launched his ambitious campaign into Mesopotamia. The land was a patchwork of ancient cities and cultures, under the loose and declining control of the Seleucid Empire, Mithridates' strategy was a blend of military might and astute diplomacy. He advanced with his cavalry, renowned for their prowess in both the charge and the retreat, a tactic that bewildered the more static Seleucid forces. One by one, the cities of Mesopotamia fell. Nisibis, a strategic fortress city, surrendered after a short but intense siege. As he approached the ancient city of Babylon, Mithridates faced not just military challenges, but also the task of winning over a populace steeped in tradition and history. He entered Babylon not as a conqueror, 
but as a liberator, respecting their traditions and laws. And in return, the Babylonians welcomed him as their ruler. The capture of Seleucia, the lustrous city on the Tigris, in 141 BC, was the crowning achievement of his campaign. The city, a melting pot of Greek and Eastern cultures, opened its gates after a siege that displayed the might and ingenuity of the Parthian military. Mithridates' entrance into the city was a spectacle of power and magnanimity. He walked through the streets not as a despot, but as a ruler who held the vision of a united and prosperous empire. However, the shadows of another power were slowly stretching towards the Parthian realm. Rome, the burgeoning republic in the west, had begun its inexorable expansion, casting its eyes on the eastern kingdoms. Mithridates, ever the strategist, knew that the future would eventually bring him into the sphere of this new western power. Mithridates' success in Mesopotamia was not just a triumph of arms, it was a diplomatic victory. He understood the intricate web of loyalties and rivalries that existed between the cities and tribes. By positioning himself as a ruler who respected local customs and traditions, he managed to integrate these diverse regions into the Parthian Empire, setting the stage for an era of prosperity and cultural synthesis. Under the rule of Mithridates I, Mesopotamia experienced a renaissance. Trade flourished as the Silk Road, the artery of commerce between the East and West, was secured under Parthian control. Cultures intermingled, and the arts and sciences thrived in this new era of stability and prosperity. The conquest of Mesopotamia was a testament to the vision and capability of Mithridates I. He had transformed Parthia into an empire that commanded respect and fear, an empire that would stand as a bulwark against the powers of both the East and the West, and an empire that would be remembered for centuries to come. Part 3 the struggle for supremacy and the balance of power. In the aftermath of his victories in Mesopotamia, Mithridates I, the Parthian monarch, stood at the zenith of his power. However, the landscape of the ancient world was shifting and new challenges loomed on the horizon. The Roman Republic, a burgeoning power in the West, and the resilient Seleucid Empire were reshaping the geopolitical dynamics of the age. By 139 BC, Mithridates had consolidated his hold over Mesopotamia and turned his attention towards the Hellenistic states in the west. He embarked on a campaign to seize the remaining territories of the Seleucid Empire, aiming to eliminate this age-old rival once and for all. This campaign led him to Syria, a land rich in history and cultural significance. Mithridates' approach was a combination of military might and diplomatic shrewdness. He forged alliances with local Syrian princes, promising them autonomy under Parthian overlordship. His forces, a blend of swift horse archers and heavy cavalry, swept through the region, capturing key cities like Antioch and Damascus. The fall of these cities marked a pivotal moment in the region's history, effectively ending the Seleucid rule and elevating Parthia as the dominant power in the Near East. Mithridates' victory in Syria was not just a military triumph, it was a strategic masterstroke that reshaped the balance of power. He controlled the trade routes that connected the East and West, and his empire became a cultural melting pot where Greek, Persian, and Mesopotamian traditions blended. However, Mithridates' expansionist policies inevitably put him on a collision course with Rome. The Roman Republic, having subdued much of the Mediterranean, was now turning its gaze eastward. In 138 BC, Mithridates encountered the first Roman emissaries, who viewed Parthia's expansion with concern. These initial meetings were cordial, but underscored a mutual recognition of each other as potential rivals. Mithridates, aware of the Roman military prowess, sought to avoid direct confrontation. He focused on strengthening his empire's borders and fortifying key positions. Cities like Hatra and Nisibis were turned into formidable bastions to deter any potential incursions. In the internal affairs of his empire, Mithridates demonstrated a keen understanding of governance. He established a system of satrapies, appointing local governors while ensuring their loyalty to the central authority. This system allowed for efficient administration and the integration of diverse cultures under the Parthian banner. Under Mithridates' rule, the Parthian Empire reached the height of its cultural and economic prosperity. The Silk Road thrived, 
bringing wealth and exotic goods from far off lands. The cities of Parthia became centers of learning and culture, where philosophers, artists, and scientists from different parts of the world gathered. As Mithridates' reign approached its twilight years, he had transformed Parthia into a superpower that commanded respect across the known world. His legacy was not just that of a conqueror, but as a visionary ruler who laid the foundations for an empire that would endure for centuries, a beacon of stability and cultural synthesis in a world of constant change. Part 4. The Legacy and the Twilight of Mithridates As the sun began to set on the reign of Mithridates I, the great Parthian king, his empire stood as a colossus astride the ancient world. From the fertile plains of Mesopotamia to the rugged mountains of Persia, his rule had brought an era of unprecedented prosperity and cultural fusion. Yet, in these twilight years, Mithridates faced the greatest challenges to his legacy and the future of his empire. The Roman Republic, ever expanding and ambitious, continued its encroachment into territories that Mithridates considered within Parthia's sphere of influence. In 132 BC, a critical moment arrived when Roman forces, under the command of Scipio Aemilianus, made significant advances into the eastern Mediterranean. Mithridates, a sage in statecraft, realized that a direct military confrontation with Rome was not in Parthia's best interests. He opted for a strategy of cautious engagement, leveraging diplomacy to navigate the treacherous waters of Roman expansionism. During this period, Mithridates embarked on a series of reforms to consolidate his empire. He recognized that the true strength of Parthia lay not just in its military might, but in its cultural and economic vitality. He patronized the arts and sciences, inviting scholars and artists from as far as Greece and India to his court in Ctesiphon. The city, under his rule, became a beacon of learning and sophistication, rivaling the great capitals of the ancient world. However, the internal stability of the empire was not without its challenges. The vastness of Parthian territories with their diverse populations required a delicate balancing act. Mithridates implemented a system of semi-autonomous governance, allowing local rulers a degree of self-rule while ensuring their allegiance to the Parthian crown. This system, though effective, required constant vigilance and adjustment to prevent regional uprisings or power struggles. In the later years of his reign, Mithridates faced personal tragedies and political intrigues. The loss of his son, Phraates II, in a skirmish on the eastern frontiers, was a profound blow to the aging king. Furthermore, court intrigues and rivalries began to surface, as powerful nobles jockeyed for influence and position in anticipation of the king's passing. Despite these challenges, Mithridates' reign ended as it had been lived, with dignity and foresight. He spent his final years grooming his successor, ensuring a smooth transition of power. His last significant act was to formalize relations with Rome signing a treaty that established a fragile but important peace between the two great empires. Mithridates I passed away in 128 BC, leaving behind an empire that was a testament to his vision and leadership. His legacy was not just the territorial expansion of Parthia, but the establishment of a multicultural society that flourished in peace and prosperity. The foundations he laid would sustain the Parthian Empire for centuries, making it a formidable power in the ancient world and a crucible of cultural and intellectual exchange. His death marked the end of an era, but the echoes of his reign continued to shape the course of history. Mithridates I, the King of Kings, had etched his name into the annals of history, not just as a conqueror, but as a visionary who saw beyond conquest and sought to build an empire that transcended the ephemeral glories of war.